The moment you walk through the door of Wolf Editions, it is obvious this place is really out of the ordinary. At first, you might think this studio is a working museum, but it's a business, one that David Wolf has run for almost 25 years. You've probably heard the saying, find something you love to do and you'll never work a day in your life. It's true, that's true. That kind of sum up what you've had? There's not a lot of people out there that love what they do and just get up and just want to go to work. And I've been doing that almost 40 years just loving to go to work. Wolf makes prints and posters, but he's perhaps best known for his beautifully designed and printed books. Not many copies are produced. In fact, on occasion, he has produced a single volume. And the prices reflect the quality. The most expensive book he's ever made originally cost about $4,000. I make books that go into a museum and nobody sees them. I don't like that very much. But I really am pleased when somebody says that, that the book that I've created is their favorite book and they pick it up and look at it all the time. The studio looks like something Willy Wonka would operate if he were a printer. The equipment is anywhere from 60 to 170 years old. Each machine its own little world whose mysteries and workings only Wolf understands. Can you show us how mm -hmm. it works? It's noisy, so. Chances are you've never seen anything like this. Even better, you've never heard anything like this. No digital beeps, just the whirring and clicking and clacking of machinery from a bygone era. So I hit the key and the matrix comes out of here and comes down, rides on this belt and forms sentences here. Then I send it up, goes over, goes down to the casting mechanism, casts, now it's picking up the letters. Oop, come on. Ah. <laughs> yeah, it's stuck. Well, you're not gonna put that in. <laughs> the stories are always better when something goes wrong. You know how that works. A guy like helps him out about once a month, but Wolf Editions is really a one-man operation. There aren't a lot of people clamoring to get into this line of work. I mean, that's where I got most of this equipment. Shops closing and nobody, there's no place to take it. And somebody calls me up and says, any of this you want to come get, if you can move it, it's yours. How authentic is Wolf's equipment? Well, a few years ago, when the producers of the movie Little Women wanted to create a completely realistic 19th century printing shop, they hired Wolf to bring down three or four of his machines, set up shop, get outfitted in a period costume, and spend a couple of days being filmed. He ended up on the cutting room floor. Really all that's in the, in the movie are my hands. <laughs> well, how did the machinery look? Oh, the machinery looked great. They shot down in here and, you know, they showed this action. Wolf does extensive research so he can restore these machines as close as possible to their original state. When he acquired this piece, it was, he says, a shade of bilious green. So did this look like a 1970s refrigerator? It was that kind of <laughs> it shade? Was. It was. Shag carpeting from the 70s, yeah. that color? Yeah, and it was... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> when he found the machine, it was sitting in a hallway at a mill in Biddeford, untouched for at least 20 years. And I was just walking through the mill and I went, oh, <laughs> gotta have that. <laughs> Business is good largely because Wolf's skills and his array of machines are all but impossible to replicate. He estimates there are fewer than 10 businesses in the U.S. doing what he does. What is it about this work that you find rewarding? I make art every day. It may not be my art, but I'm making art every day. It's not just the machines that have a history, so does this occupation. Benjamin Franklin was a printer, and David Wolf fits right in in a long line of printing tinkerers. I realized, I was just thinking about this interview this morning, I'm like, you know, how can I explain why I have so much stuff without actually coming across as some sort of weird 
it's, you know. And what, what answer did you come up with? My answer is that I love to reuse stuff. And um, I, I save things that I think Charlie across the hall might need in a year. And, and, and it works. He comes in, he goes, David, you got to whatever. And I go, oh, well, yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> in a fast-changing world, this is an island of stability. These machines aren't going anywhere, and neither is their owner. How long are you going to keep doing this, David? Till I drop.